education purposes, that sort of thing. Um, you know, you mentioned that she had placed that the head in the pot mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, and then there was other bags with the hands and feet. Mm -hmm. Were they all placed in one bag or separated out, or what do I, you call? I think it was just all in one bag, um, but I could be mistaken. Okay. Do you recall um, if it was just the hands and feet, or what was all put it, in those bags? It should have just been the hands and feet. Um, because the forearms and calves, I know that we threw into some dumpster somewhere. About one year ago, when I first started trying my hand at being a YouTuber, I covered the case of Sarah Buzzard, a soft-spoken young woman who killed and chopped up her roommate. That video went viral and helped me solidify myself as a true crime content producer. Not long afterward, a bunch of videos popped up covering the same case. I didn't pay much attention and moved on to working on new cases, but recently I watched some of these videos and noticed a couple things. First, I noticed other channels were copying my thumbnail, almost exactly, and they were getting the case facts wrong while doing so. This thumbnail just changed soup pot to oven, and this one is just plain wrong. But I also noticed the other channels covering this interrogation, even those just posting the raw interrogation footage, only included the first hour of the interview. Up to now, I assumed that all of these other YouTubers had acquired the footage in the same way that I did, which is a research-heavy and financially costly endeavor. So when I noticed that all of these channels were cutting off the interrogation footage at about one hour into the interview, I realized that everyone was getting their footage from the original video I had posted. Because if you watched my original video, you would have heard this at the end. Ultimately, the death of Jenna means we will never know for certain. What is certain, however, is that this interrogation goes on for another two hours. In other words, there are still two never-before-seen hours of the Sarah Buzzard interrogation. Today, I present to you those two hours. If you need to catch up, watch part one in the description below, or watch one of the many other videos that covered the first hour of Sarah Buzzard's interrogation. I hope you enjoy. And roughly about what time of day was it that um, we would have been upstairs and all this started? Because um, you said this, it took a yeah. while. Mm -hmm. So roughly about what time of day? Anywhere between... I don't know exactly the time, but I knew that it, the sun was starting to go down. Okay. Um, and I don't expect you to. Yeah, so it, expect it could be anywhere from like six to nine somewhere. Mm -hmm. I just remember that um, that the sun was setting when I was in the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, and when Naira started to get the things out from under the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it took a while. You said you were awake for thirty-six hours. Mm -hmm. um, about what time did you return home then after? Maybe one or two in the morning. Okay. Um, Three at the latest. Okay. Um, I, I started to lose track of my concept of time because I kept sleeping and then driving, sleeping, and driving. Sure. Okay. You said Corey was waiting for you mm -hmm. at that point in time. Um, I think he had come back sometime in the evening, I guess, and since we didn't leave a note or anything and he couldn't call me, um, he didn't know what was going on. Did Naira have a phone or phone number? She kept hers turned off. Okay, so it's not something that Corey would have been able to reach out, or would he have even reached out to her? He might have. Okay. Uh, that was uh, one thing that also bothered me was uh, he had told me, it's kind of unrelated, but sure. um, yeah. he had told me that um, he had asked Naira for her number and that she gave it to him, which I thought was kind of weird considering she didn't like him. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I came to find out that he had taken my phone, copied her number, messaged her, and said that I gave him the number. number. And uh, we didn't find out about that until uh, Naira and I sat down and talked about it. And she said, oh, he said that you gave him the number. I said, no, you gave him the number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... So any time after um, Brian would have been identified, were you guys watching the news or watching any of that mm -hmm. beforehand? So you had seen when he had been identified at that 
not identified. I never knew that he was identified. I saw the news report that they had found the body, that they were trying to get a DNA extraction or whatever, and that they hadn't found any matches. So I think maybe two or three-ish years after that, we kind of stopped checking the news because nothing changed. So I never knew that he was identified because I don't know if that was released to the public. Talking about keeping parts of it for identification purposes, that sort of thing, you know, you mentioned that she had placed the head in the pot and that sort of thing, and then there was other bags with the hands and feet. Were they all placed in one bag or separated out or what do you recall? I think it was just all in one bag, but I could be mistaken. Okay. Do you recall if it was just the hands and feet or what was all put in those bags? It should have just been the hands and feet because the forearms and calves, I know that we threw into some dumpster somewhere. Do you recall if they were manipulated at all? You mentioned needing to put it in another bag because it started to have an odor. Do you recall if Naira or either you or her went into those bags at all to move them around, to put some of it in a separate bag or anything like that? I don't remember. I know that it was easier to just keep putting it in new bags than it was to take them out and change the bags. Plus the places we were living did not allow us to have enough room to really properly take care of it, so it was easier to put it in another trash bag, put it in another trash bag. We might have stuck it in another vacuum seal that we had laying around, but we just kept layering it so we wouldn't have to deal with it. So the pot was never opened back up after it was sealed? Okay. At least I don't think so. I mean, she might have, but I never did. Okay. And you had mentioned when the hands and feet were placed in the bag, you said that she had went back and wanted to do something to separate them? Yeah, to like pick them apart so that it didn't resemble a hand or a foot anymore. Because she thought it would be easier to get rid of that part than the head. But I think once we put it in the bag with the head, at least I just kind of forgot about it and just kept everything in there. So she never necessarily did that part of it, that was just her plan? Right. Initially? Okay. Okay. Can you use the bathroom or anything? I think I'm good right now. Let me step out, take a quick break, if that's okay with you. Okay. Good with the water and things, do you need anything? I don't think so. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Is that okay? Thank you for the coffee. Oh, you're welcome. Is that any good? It was good. We took a long shot. It's thermally good to us, so it took a long shot on it. Yeah. Oh, Scarlett, yeah. So we have a few more things to touch on, if that's okay. I kind of went back and looked at some different things and wanted to ask additional questions for clarification. With regard to working at Barnes & Noble, would you recall working that morning on that Saturday, the, I guess it would be the 26th, until like noon, or would you have gotten a call from Naira to come home? I wouldn't have gotten a call from her to come home. Maybe I worked in the morning. I honestly can't remember. I know that she wouldn't have called me to come home. So if it was an early morning shift, I would have left around 6.30ish, and I would have come home around 
one or two, three at the latest. Okay. So I, I don't remember. Okay. You do recall waking up um, that morning and discussing things, or, or Naira was making comments and things that were of concern to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what time frame do you recall waking up? Um, I mean, would have, have this been able to be a conversation prior to going to work? No, it would have been one after in that case, um, because we talked for maybe an hour or so. Um, it wasn't like a like the kind of discussion I'm having now. It was more of like a mm-hmm. sleepy, mm-hmm. wondering, spotted with other topics. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I I don't remember, but if I did work that morning, um, then when I came home, we might have laid around and talked about it. Okay. Um, and, and total different topic, okay. Uh, you're an artist, mm-hmm. right? So some of your art book, yeah, yeah. Can you explain that? Um, so art for me is uh, a coping mechanism. Um, and I know that Randy and Eric had mentioned that there were two pieces in particular that gave people red flags. Um, one was a painting of uh, of a sheep with um, that was done in blood, um, or some of it. That piece I had done prior to ever knowing about Ryan. Um, that was a coping mechanism for everything that I'd been through with Corey. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the artist's statement that I wrote about it said that uh, I felt like a sacrificial lamb giving up my happiness so that somebody else could get what they wanted. Um, and I used to cut myself um, when I was in high school. Uh, so that kind of all brought like my anxiety and depression into that piece. Sure. Um, the other one was uh, a mermaid um, holding a, a human head. And I know that uh, people thought, or at least I heard that this was like, um, I don't remember how they described it, but uh, showing like, look what I did. Um, but that was also a coping mechanism, having to um, drag that around with me everywhere we moved. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I uh, did that in October, so it was supposed to be kind of a macabre piece for Halloween. Um, and also tying back to uh, the myth of mermaids, that they would dismember their victims and drown them or whatever. Um, so that was both a kind of, um, what's the word, uh, a shock value piece mixed with my own personal struggle. And the personal struggle being dealing with dealing with all of this how we just I learned. Couldn't, I mean, I couldn't talk sure. to anyone about it. Yeah, you got to release that in some fashion mm-hmm. for you. That was all right. So if, if there are any other pieces um, that were alarming, uh, none of them were meant as uh, bragging rights. They were all just coping mechanisms. Sure. No, I appreciate it because that makes more sense. Yeah. No, because you had uh, the one makeup only, I think that's the one that you had, mm-hmm. um, and you had gone and out for an honorable mention, I think, on that one on one of your art shows. So that was the one made with blood. Was that your blood that you that was used my blood. that? I just pricked a finger and, and uh, put some in a cup and used it, so it wasn't like any weird, gory sure. thing. Sure. Um, so that, that piece meant a lot to me because of everything that I had gone through with Corey. I basically just felt like a piece of meat, and I needed a way to get that out. Okay. understand. And you had another one titled, titled Sacrificial Lamb. That I also, I think that was the, I did that before the painting, um, same sheet, same, um, mm-hmm. it was, it's actually coincidence that I drew it with the limbs severed. Um, I remember looking at some artist who did something like that, um, and so that was also coping with 
feeling like the sacrificial lamb. So I did that first, and then I did the painting. Um, getting back a little bit to the, the I guess the body. Okay, there's no easy way around it, so I apologize. Um, how long do you recall that the hands or the head and things remained in the freezer? Um, several days. Um, I don't remember exactly how long, but I knew it wasn't right away. Um, but with the way Naira had bagged them and positioned them, uh, it didn't bring any suspicion. Um, at least Corey never seemed suspicious of it. Um, I think she was waiting for a good time when nobody would be there and she wouldn't be disturbed. So when Corey was at school, he's usually there. Uh, in the, he would usually take the bus sometime in the morning and not be back until either late afternoon, early evening, something like that. And uh, so she would have waited until I was at work and, and he was at school so she wouldn't be interrupted. So I know it was in there for at least a few days, if not longer. And this wasn't something discussed with Corey at all? No, at any point. Was there ever any conversation with Corey, um, even after this kind of came out on the news? I haven't um, spoken to him for okay. many, many years. Four years now, I think. Um, I He did ask me, I think, on a few occasions what I did that day. Um, but I would never tell him. I suspect he thinks it was some kind of drug deal, um, but he never knew what actually happened and then didn't ask me anymore. What do you mean he suspects it was some kind of drug deal? Um, I'm, he, he told me, or when he was trying to ask me like what happened and I said, I can't tell you. Uh, I do remember asking him, what do you think it was? And he said, I, I thought it was some kind of drug deal. Um, because he knew that Naira had some shady secrets. Um, there was no proof, but based on her personality, um, I think that was what he thought had happened. Um, but he never outright asked me, and I never outright volunteered any of the information. So I didn't need him to know. Okay. So you're speaking of why you guys were gone and came home at such an odd time frame. And why would my phone be off? Because I never I never turned off my phone. Uh, but Naira wanted me to uh, so that he couldn't contact me and also that he couldn't track the GPS or something like that. I didn't fully understand that. I just followed her directions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and, and speaking about that, um, the conversation that you had with Corey about Ryan, mm -hmm. Was Naira was not a part of that? No. Um, I told her afterwards, but she wasn't there for the initial part. I just relayed the information. Okay. And you mentioned something about um, Naira's shady past. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. Um, so she started hormone therapy when she was, I think, 20 or 21. Um, and she moved out uh, of her mother's house. Um, and the places that she had stayed were kind of seedy. Um, I know she stayed with, uh, or she roomed with some porn stars. Uh, she was doing cam videos to make money. Um, I, uh, she had a violent past. Um, when she was in high school, I think she tried to stab someone with a pencil or something, but uh, the charges were dropped. Um, she implied that she had done something else that was also violent that I never found out about. Um, and then just the way her personality was with the sociopathic tendencies, the uh, aggressive, manipulative behavior. Um, she didn't like to talk about her past with me, but she would sometimes feed me small little 
tidbits to um, show that their she had secrets. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was in a way to manipulate you? To intimidate you? Possibly. Um, I don't. I don't really know how I felt about it. I mean, later on, uh, the longer we were together, um, I just accepted it and uh, didn't try to ask because that was her past, and she would do with it what she would. Um, but uh, once Corey couldn't be with her and me, um, and once she came back, he changed his attitude from trying to insert himself to trying to make me break up with her, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so you mentioned that she would give you a little tidbits here and there of, of these secrets and things. Mm-hmm. The tidbits being that she tried to stab somebody with a pencil? Was that kind of like yeah, the tidbits that she would give? Uh, that was one that she was straightforward with me about. Tell me more about that. Um, see, um, I don't know what grade it was. I just know it was high school. Um, it was before she started transitioning, um, and I think it might have been, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I, I think she was at a point in her life where she knew that she should have been a woman, mm-hmm. but didn't have the resources to do anything about it. Um, so she she had well, she always had a lot of aggression. She was a very straightforward, aggressive type of person. Sure. Um, so from my understanding, with the stabbing, um, I think she and some friends had made a, a comic um, for themselves, and the person who was stabbed took the pages and tore them up, or something like that. So she took a pencil and. Uh, I don't know where they got stabbed, but um, she stabbed them with a pencil, and um, she was brought to court, but the charges were dropped or some kind of agreement they came to, so it never stayed on her record. Um, Did did this happen at the school or outside of the school? It was at the school. Do you happen to know what school she would have attended? No. Um, Do you know where her own town was? Holyoke. Well, yeah. Massachusetts, okay. so I wouldn't be surprised if it was at one of those schools. Sure. Okay. Appreciate you sharing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with all her, like, she had these violent tendencies, was there ever a time that you were like, oh, maybe this is a relationship I want to shy away from, maybe she needs uh, to leave? During her absence, when she was back at her hometown, um, I do remember that Corey took advantage of her absence to try to turn me against her, um, either because he, I want to say it could have been because he saw what she was really like, but the truth is he he felt jealous and uh, um, he, he wanted her out of my life. Because I kept choosing her over him mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. Um, so during her absence, uh, he started causing me to resent her. Mm-hmm. Um, and when she did finally come back, we kind of had a fight over the phone. Um, but what ended up happening was we stopped trying to be uh, intimate and just started to be friends, which made the relationship stronger. Um, And she became more open with me. Um, When I first met her, she was very, very guarded. She never really shared anything about herself. Um, She didn't want me to add her on Facebook. She didn't want any public knowledge of us. But once she came back, uh, she was more open about that. to me, um, to a longer term relationship, less casual. Uh, so what Corey had tried to do actually ended up backfiring on him. Sure. But you mentioned that she didn't want that connection, basically, mm-hmm. um, at least not in the public's view. Um, 
Did she have Facebook? Um, she did, but she didn't really use it. Um, she never posted pictures of herself. She never let anyone take pictures of her because um, her she had horrible self-esteem issues, and her what she pictured as her inner self was not what she actually saw. Um, so she had her Facebook to talk to friends. Sure. Um, but never to post pictures or anything like that. What name would she have gone by? Um, when I met her, she stuck with Jennifer. Um, the only people who knew her real name uh, was her family, um, well, specifically her mother and her sister, um, myself, and any uh, medical professionals, dentists, um, sure. doctors, stuff like that. So what would have been her like Facebook or social media name? Um, probably Jenna. Jenna. Uh, that's typically what she used. She so used a certain last name. Um, no, she tried to keep it uh, just just Jenna. Um, she also never used her last name for anything. Um, so on on Steam she was Jenna. On uh, message boards she was Jenna. So. Um, that was the common name that most people knew her by. So to get accounts on these different uh, media sites and things, mm -hmm. you generally would have to have some sort of email address. Mm -hmm. Do you recall what her email address it was? Uh, it was also Jenna573, um, and it was through, uh, um, it was basically a message board, but it was tied to uh, um, an organization she used to be a part of that did uh, games, so at things like Comic Con, um, they would bring like Dance Dance Revolution arcade games, uh, set them up so that people at the convention can use it. Hmm. Um, and uh, that was the group that her email was tied to. Hmm. Um. Did she have, like, a Gmail account or anything? Mm -hmm. Do you know how that would have been? That's, well, her email was technically Gmail, but the end handle was different, so it was Jenna573 at, um, and it spelled out Bimani Sows, which was the name of the forum, but it used the Google uh, layout. Okay. Um, whoever was in charge of the email, uh, they, I, I don't really know what it was like, or how they did it, but um, it was routed through Gmail, but it used the the website's handle, um, so it, some something like that. Okay. But I think it was through Gmail, but the website host was in charge of distributing the emails or providing them or, or something like that. I don't fully understand it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> um. And I guess it was 2015, around August or so, there were searches for firearm bill of sale. Um, I guess it had been like around August 10th um, or so. Do you recall searching that? Um, I don't recall it, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I'm. I can't. I don't know if it was for her pistol that she used, or if it was for the rifle that I bought. Um, I, I want to say it was the rifle, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, what initiated those purchases? Uh, Naira was a, I don't want to say a gun fanatic, but she strongly believed in her right to carry. Um, and she already had um, a shotgun, a, an air rifle, and I think I think it was just those two. Um, she purchased the pistol. Um, I I can't remember when. Um, uh, sometime during the summer. Uh, and then I, uh, she wanted to go shooting at a range, um, so she was doing research to see what 
would work best for me um, because I I wanted uh, I've, I've never really cared about guns uh, I still don't mm-hmm. um, but it was something that we could bond over and she could teach me about mm-hmm. um, and if we ever played like zombie games or something like that I would always pick Greifel so she did research for me to find the best one um, so that could have been what the searches were. Sure. Um, I don't think I would have done the searches myself because I didn't understand what I needed to look for. Um, so that would have been something that she did and then explained later to me. Um, do you recall going out with her to purchase a pistol just yeah. shortly after this weekend? I think... Um, uh, I don't know if it was before or after, um, but I did go with her to, I think it was Canada Mountain, uh, at least that's where I got mine, so I imagine that we would have gone to the same place. Um, I, I thought it was before, but it could have been after. Um, I I honestly don't remember, but I do remember going with her. Do you recall the conversation? I guess was it anything to do with, um, you know, possibly using it on Ryan or having it for after the fact for the suicide pact? Or when did that suicide pact come into play? Um, I think. I don't think we really discussed it until after the body had been found um, because she became more paranoid. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't remember if... I'm, I'm thinking the suicide pack was after she got the pistol because that would make the most sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was sometime after January, February then that it was really spoken about. Mm-hmm. It was it was not something that I, I wanted to talk about frequently. Um sure. it was very, very scary to think about. So we discussed it and just kind of left it. Right. Okay. Um Getting back to, to, to the body and things, uh, analyzing some of that, there had been like foil pieces discovered with some of it. Do you recall anything, including foil or, um, you know, if that would have been something that would have came off of something that was used? Um, there, wasn't, there wasn't anything upstairs that we had used that had foil in it. It was just um, trash bags, uh, medical gloves, um, the saw, the bleach, and the vinegar, and some clean rags or paper towels, um, and I guess the duct tape. Um, I don't know what the foil would be. Uh, that would have been something that she did something with on her own. Okay. Um, the, the saw itself, was it like a clean saw? Was it rusty? Was it, you know what I'm saying? I don't remember. Okay. Um, I don't remember if it was new or old. That was the first time that Megan and I went back here after your arrest and you got brought over here. I had asked you about your tattoo as we were walking back. Mm-hmm. Is that in correlation to the suicide yeah. part? I got this uh, after we had discussed it. Um, and also, I mean, unfortunately, now it's in the memento of her. Um, but I, I did get it um, during a period where I was most terrified and anxious about it um, and uh, it was also I guess more of a reminder for her because she would see it more than I did and um, every now and then she would kiss it for good luck mm-hmm. um, so that's what the did anybody else know about your suicide back I didn't know if anybody else had seen that um, and this question on what um, that was about. They, I've had um, not any family members, but strangers have asked about it, and I would just say that it's the caliber that her pistol had. Um, 
and that's all I need to say. Strong value, personal thing. Mm -hmm. So Jim had used, or Myra had used your phone um, a lot to do a lot of these searches. Did her phone have data capabilities? Um, I think the phone she had at the time was one that you might have gotten, the HTC Silver phone. Um, it was a little outdated, um, and she primarily used it for um, music and videos and things like that. Um, so my phone was whatever plan my mom had um I had the one that did data so it was a little bit faster and I usually always had it on me so if she needed to look up someone or something uh quickly she would just grab it and type it in rather than um like if we were upstairs you have to go back downstairs and sure. get it. exactly do you recall if she had a passcode on there on her or what that would be probably um but I I, um, okay. I didn't know if it was like a specific number that you both you know Prior to you and um, Nara meeting, I know you said that you met on a dating website. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what things were? Craigslist. Craigslist. Okay. They, they took down the personal section. Sure. Okay. And that was the same one Corey was using where he had found Ryan. I don't know. Okay. Um, he didn't share any of that. Um, I didn't want to know. He just told okay. me I've been talking to this guy. I want him to come and stay with us. Okay. I know that I did talk to Ryan once. Um, I don't know if it was Google Hangouts or IM or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had talked to him once. That's where I said, oh, you know, you like to sketch. I could help you. Don't need him. No. Um, um, yeah. And uh, talked to him just that one time. Never got photos or anything. And then I just stopped talking to him um, and let Corey do his own thing. It sounds like you and Corey were kind of venturing out of her marriage. Unknowingly. Okay. Um, since, well, I mean, in hindsight, I can see a lot of the, the signs that I should have um, seen with him. Um, when we were dating, he had cheated on me once. Um, when we got married and then moved into the apartment, so I could start my freshman year. Uh, he tried to go after my best friend, which caused us to have a falling out. He went after my classmates. So the first couple of years, I was trying to support him with whatever he was figuring out. But by year three and on, I was just tired of it. Um, I was exploring my sexuality because I thought for a while he was more attracted to women and he was okay with that expecting that he might be able to mm -hmm. stick himself in the in the uh, sure. relationship so definitely by the time I met Naira um, we were both kind of branching off um, I had more success than he did but definitely by year four and a half to five, um, we were pursuing our own separate relationships. Um, I had considered divorce for a while, but uh, I wasn't sure if that was something I really wanted to do. Um, and Ryan's death kind of uh, after that, so catalyst and um, made me realize that I didn't want to be with Corey anymore, especially when uh, after Ryan in his mind left, uh, he almost immediately found a new girlfriend to move in. Uh, I don't think she officially moved in, but she was there enough that she acted as another person. Um, and I was I was just done with all of these people being in our in the apartment. Was there anyone else this, um, before Corey? Or, I'm sorry, before Ryan? Um, if there were, they were casual. Okay. Um, I I can't think of any. Um, I, I mean, I can think of all the attempts that he made with all my friends, but nothing, sure. nothing was ever successful. Okay. 
Nothing where he had wanted to move someone else in, had asked mm -hmm. you for permission to move someone else in. So this is the first time. Okay. Um, you had mentioned all of Naira's mentioning, like, the lady walked across the parking lot and how easy it would be. Um, have you ever, has it ever crossed your mind that possibly she's done something like this before? Okay. Do you have any knowledge of her right. doing this before? No. Um, and I, I don't think she would have told me anyway, as the, whatever the term is, the, I, I wouldn't be an accomplice or keeping it secret or something right. like that. Um, so I, I never knew for sure, but I wouldn't have been surprised. And you never asked her if she's done something like that? Um, I asked her once and she didn't answer, which is probably what made me suspect that something had happened, but I never pushed her for it. You said she kind of had a past, violent past, that sort of thing. Other than the um, pencil stabbing, are you aware of any other? Anything. That she was never big on physical violence, mostly mental. Um, she, uh, and early in our relationship, she, she did it to me too. She liked to find people's weaknesses and dig her claws into them and just keep pushing them. Um, she would troll people online. Um, because it was funny and fun for her. Um, and she liked seeing how far she could go pushing someone's buttons. Um, so for our first few years together, um, she would do that to me until uh, it became too much. Um, and she worked on not subjecting me to that but would still do it to other people online, mm -hmm. um, especially if she was playing games. Uh, so her her violence was usually directed to inanimate objects like cookery, uh, clothes, whatever, um, but not really to other people, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Do you know if she had been arrested for anything else? Other than I, know. I just know about the stabbing. So I'm about how old would she have been at that time? Um, she was in high school. Um, I don't know exactly when, but okay. sometime high school. And you said you know what name she would have went by at that time? Yes, I think it would have been under Yarny Whitaker. Okay. Do you know any prior names? Uh, she was born Jeremy Ramos, um, and then. Sometime in school, I don't know if it was high school or middle school, she changed her name to Yarny Whitaker, and then she changed her name to Naira Whitaker. Um, you mentioned having a conversation with uh, Ryan about him peeking out the door and wanting to talk with you, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Was there ever any conversation that led you to believe that he would have wanted to harm himself in any way, um, felt suicidal, or that he was just overwhelmed with... Leaving as quiet as only that time did he ever strike. I don't know if I go so far as to say suicidal, but at least self harm. Um, because when he was crying and pleading, he was pulling on his hair a little harder than one would normally do and uh, hitting himself in the forehead with the heel of his hand um, to the point I could hear it echoing. Um, he had never said or displayed suicidal tendencies. Um, the only other time that I saw him come somewhat close to how he acted in the bedroom was when uh, he did the dishes um, not very well. Uh, and when Naira came down to put them away or use one, um, she called him out on it. Mm. And uh, did, I do remember her trying to explain to him, you know, this is how you can make sure that nothing is left over. Um, and it was a conversation where it would have made sense for him to say, oh, okay, I'll do it better next time. But instead, he collapsed into a chair crying and saying, this is the one job that I have to do and I can't even do it right. And uh, I know all of us were in the kitchen, and we were all shocked at that response. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, I, I mean, I, I assume he had a lot of anxiety. Um, he obviously had a lot of self-esteem, self-confidence issues. Uh, and I don't think he really knew how to handle criticism, so that's why he acted the way he did. That's why he eavesdropped on the stairs. Um, yeah. He was, you know, he had a lot of problems, but it wasn't something that I wanted to help coach him to figure out. I just let him do his own thing. Sure. And that conversation where he was pleading and crying at things, was that that morning? Mm-hmm. I guess it was Saturday. Yeah, sometime on Saturday. I don't think it was, um, I, I don't remember exactly when, but either probably in the early to mid-afternoon or something like that. And you said obviously these weaknesses of Brian are obvious to all three of you in this department at this point in time. Um, and you said Naira liked to latch onto those kind of digger calls into those weaknesses. Is mm-hmm. that something that she did to oh, Ryan? As absolutely. Well? Okay. And I guess how would she go about it? Would it be like more verbal, to put down things like that? Did she ever get physical towards him at no. all? Okay. It was always verbal. Um, Probably because the things that she would say or point out stuck a lot more than if it was a physical altercation. So you mentioned that you had brought um, Naira up to speed on the part where Corey told Ryan he needed to leave and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then was that before um, the conversation that she started making comments about killing him and the plan? Um, it, or why wouldn't she have just left him? back as things leave. I don't know. Um, that's because I was, I remember telling her, why can't we just, just let him go? Why do you need to, uh, to do this? Um, and the, the thing she said was along the lines of someone like that doesn't deserve to be out in the world to ruin someone else's life. So I think in some perverse way, it was her idea that she, I don't want to go so far as to say she was dealing out justice, but um, she just felt very strongly that he didn't deserve to be out there. You you had mentioned in prior conversations that you felt like Ryan had ruined your life. Did you express that to him? Uh, No. Um, When I said that the first time, I was doing it to protect her. Um, I didn't like Ryan. Uh, He did disgust me, but I didn't feel that he ruined my life, Corey ruined my life. Um, I, every problem that I had suffered through was a direct result of his actions. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't like what Ryan had done to my relationship, um, but I didn't blame him for the outcome, and I didn't blame him for the resulting divorce. Uh, any animosity I have still is towards Corey. I'm just being late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why uh, we tried to be friends for the year after we divorced, but um, it was not, not good. So I just cut him off completely and I haven't spoken to him since then. And I hate to go there, and this is going to sound really mean coming from me, but it's just, it popped in my head. So you said you were trying to protect Jen. Knowing the suicide pact in place, and that was her game plan, I guess, why try to protect her at that point in time? Yeah, that's what I thought about in hindsight. Um, it, it would have devastated me to have to throw her under the bus and say, well, she was the one who did it. Um, I guess there was there was a small part of me that thought if I took the fall for her, she would be okay. Um, but thinking back now, uh, I should have known with the look on her face that there was no point trying to protect her. She was going to do it anyway with me or without me. So you knew that she was going to do that after you? I, I didn't know 100%, but I suspected it. Um, I think at one point when I was by myself in the the interview room, um, I thought I heard one of the officers say something about gunshot, and that's when it hit me. And I thought, 
oh my god, what's that? Are they talking about her? Is she, did she do it? And that was the biggest question that I had until they moved me to the other room and told me for sure. Is there a reason you wouldn't have said something to the officers there? Before what? they brought you away to uh, them? I, I had just woken up, so I was... I, I didn't know where my head was, um, and I got very lightheaded and almost passed out. Um, so I was, uh, I had a sensory overload because on one hand I'm trying to not hyperventilate, I'm trying to breathe. Um, well, you don't, you have what, a speeding ticket on your record yeah. until the cops show up at your house? That's understandable. Um, and both of the officers were asking me different questions. Um, I was trying to tell them who was in the house, and it was noise, and my mom was yelling, and I just, a lot. I I just I kind of shut down. Um, so I I didn't have enough mental capacity to remember that that movie. And I think there was a tiny part of me that thought things were going to be okay. Mm-hmm. So that's why I need to measure. Okay. Um, but Naira's, she kind of, like we discussed before, likes to sink her. Corey had mentioned that ahead of time to Brian uh, through their chats, because we had recovered most of their chats okay. back and forth. Um, and he had mentioned, like, she um, was mean, and wouldn't like the fact that if Ryan's not taking those steps to transition, because obviously she was taking those steps to become who she wants to be and who she felt she was, so Ryan needs to be at that point as well. Mm-hmm. Um, was there any mutilation that Naira had done um, towards Ryan at all, even mm-hmm. post his death? Um, no. I mean, the only mutilation was the cutting off the limbs, but... Um, I didn't know anything that Corey and Ryan talked about, um, uh, but it doesn't surprise me to hear that because that's what she did to him. Um, she loved trying to, or pointing out. Uh, so Corey was going for a uh, psychology degree, um, and he felt like he had more knowledge than the the average person. Um, but Naira knew much more than he did and loved to belittle him about that. Um, and I think he was bitter about the fact that I was grieving over her being gone for those months. Um, so he was trying to paint her as this awful person who everyone needed to avoid, um, which unfortunately it worked on me and I guess that's why he said it to Ryan. Um, she, it's a, she was a little, um, what's the word? She was hypocritical about transitioning. Um, she, with the community that she was part of, the Bimani community, um, she always said that she was the quote unquote trendsetter for transitioning because when she started, a bunch of other people in the community so did that um but her her opinion of people transitioning um was she didn't like people who wanted to wear it like a badge if that makes sense like going around saying oh look at me i mm-hmm. i you should you need to use my proper pronouns or you beat that over them. And um, she said that if you want to transition, your goal is to f- just fit in to, and that's what she tried to do. She, she didn't point out anything. She tried to be as feminine as possible because that's what she wanted to be was a woman. And, um, so with people like Ryan, who, say that they're transitioning but are not really making the effort really bothered her um and uh she felt that way towards a lot of transgendered people if anyone was trying to be flamboyant uh she found that disgusting um 
So that's that's why uh, the fact that Ryan wanted to but still looked and acted male um, just really got under her skin. What brought her to Ohio? Um, she was staying with a close friend who was like a sister to her. Um, I, I don't know the whole history about why they moved. Um, I just know that her, that she had provided funds to this, I'll just say it's her sister. Um, she had provided funds for her sister to buy a house so that um, the two of them plus a bunch of roommates could all share the house and she could stay there without needing to pay rent because she had helped mm-hmm. with that. Um, I don't know why she came to Ohio or why she picked it, um, but that's where she ended up. So she moved with the sister into mm-hmm. Ohio? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know where at in Ohio? Um, they initially lived in Whitehall. Whitehall. Okay. And then they moved again to basically around the block from the townhouse apartment. Oh, okay. um, it was about five minutes away. Okay. And do you know the name of this sister? Mandy. Um, I know she was killed with the, the drive-by. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know her last name. Uh, I never met her. Um, Naira would occasionally talk about her, but she also didn't want me to know too much about that situation. About um, the drive-by? Or no, with the, with oh, the, uh, right. the uh, with roommates and everything. So I never went, sure. if I ever went to her house, I would sit in the car on the street and wait for her to come out. I never went in. I never met any of them. Um, she didn't learn about the drive-by until we had been married for maybe two, three years. We were living in Pennsylvania at the time. Um, I've got one other thing that comes to the top of my head, but um, during the interview with Naira, um, she had mentioned that you were more of like the alpha male of the household. Oh, okay. Of the household. Of the household. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was the only responsible person. Um, I... I didn't trust Corey to manage it because um, he, not that I don't think he would have been capable, but it was just easier for me to know I'm taking care of the finances, I'm man- you know, balancing the checkbook and stuff like that. Um, that's just how I grew up since I was basically an only child because my, my siblings are significantly older than me. so. Um, from a very young age, uh, I was instilled with responsibility. I was much more mature than a lot of the freshmen at college. Um, so her saying that definitely makes sense. Um, when it was uh, everyone in the apartment, I took care of finances. I uh, you know, asked Ryan to pay rent when he needed to. I checked on the grocery levels, asked if people needed something, blah, 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 like that. Um, and then when Naira and I were married, I took care of everything. Um, she suffered from severe anxiety, depression, and agoraphobia. Um, and she had, uh, she was later diagnosed with um, a I think it's ADHD. I don't think it was ADD. Um, so she couldn't focus on tasks like that. Uh, if she, it was, uh, in order to get her to help, I would have to feed her small chores to do. So say, hey, can you put the dishes away today? Um, or the next day, can you clean this little section of the living room? If I asked her to do anything large, like vacuum the whole house, uh, she would shut down. So, uh, she had to rely very heavily on escapism to even function. Mm-hmm. Um, video games, movies, shows, things like that. Um, and I would maintain our finances. I scheduled her doctor's appointments. Um, 
I was the chauffeur if she needed to go somewhere, so it was almost um, like excuse mother and child relationship in a way. Um, but she tried to carry as much weight as she could manage. Like she was in charge of food. Um, she uh, took care of all the media for us. Um, so that that was. What she said, yes, that that's true. Um, okay. I liked being the the one in charge of all of the adult things because I knew that I could keep track of them and I was managing them. Mm-hmm. So you immediately started shaking your head no when I brought up. I that. No. So what was that it's to? Alpha, I'm outside of uh, the responsibilities. I am very timid. Um, I used to be very outgoing, but then something happened. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if. It was because of Corey. Um, I cannot handle conflict at all. Um, if someone honks at me while I'm driving, it rattles me for like an hour or so. Um, if somebody gets in my face, I shut down. Um, when it came to sex, I was always the submissive one. Um, and that became difficult um, because before she had her surgery, um, even though she was taking testosterone blocker, she was still more of the aggressive one. Um, But after her surgery, uh, she had no sexual desire and it was very, very difficult for me to initiate anything because that's not how my brain is wired. so when it came to doing adult things, I excelled. But when it came to life in general, I I'm very, very timid, very submissive. Um, it was easier to hide than try to confront someone. So if anything like that happened, well, she was with me, she would take over and stand up for me. Have you ever told anybody else all these details? This obviously was between you and Jen or um, Moira? I, when Corey and I, I think it was before we actually got divorced, but it was already on the, the court docket or whatever, uh, I had told my two best friends at the time, but I only filled them in on the relationship details. Um, and also my family, uh, my mother, my father, and my brother, I gave them the just the relationship part. So I kind of went into enough detail that they could understand what Corey did to me um, by finding other partners and what Jen did for me. Um, I never mentioned Ryan to them, as far as I know. If I did, I just said it was a partner. Um, so my my best friends uh, took it well. Um, one of them I no longer contact with. Uh, the other one I talk to regularly, and she saw the good side of Jen because um, uh, she Jen wanted to make a good impression, and uh, she did get along with my best friend's husband pretty well. So they would talk uh, while she and I would catch up. Um, and she said that she saw how happy Jen made me. Um, my dad took a while to warm up because he's he's very religious, mm-hmm. um, but eventually he, uh, I guess, accepted her. He didn't know that she was transgender. Nobody knew except one of my best friends, the one I lost contact with. Mm-hmm. Um, so my mom was pretty accepting. My brother, I don't think ever did, um, because she was very bossy. She wanted things to go the way that she thought. So when he first met her, he got that feeling that she was just manipulating me. Um, And even today, he's still very bitter at her. Um, accusing her of uh, being selfish and leaving me behind and reminding me of 
of the things that she's done. I don't remember what the question was. No, <laughs> no, no, no okay. I want to follow up another one. Have you ever told anybody about the um, the, the killing itself? Like, how at all? Um, I didn't tell anyone. Uh, I feel like she might have told two people that she trusted um, because they would have been like our safe house if we found out we could drop off the grid and stay with them. I don't know how much detail she went into, but I know that she had mentioned that she was talking to a couple of people. And that, um, but these would have been the same people that would have purchased the Greyhound ticket? Maybe. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, I never saw or heard her arranging this. Um, she just told me after the fact, as a need to know basis. Okay. Did she tell you who these people were? Um, I can remember two of them, um, but I only know their first name. Well, one of them, no, I think I only know their first names for both. Um, one of them was in Nevada and was in the process of trying to buy a house. Mm -hmm. um, the other one lived in an apartment, but it was a uh, a house, so he stayed on the, his room as a second floor. Um, and that one was more temporary. Uh, but I think their life situations changed, so those plans fell through, and then I don't know if she found a, uh, found any backups or if we were at a point where we thought that we were in the clear and we could start looking for our own place. What would those first names have been, if you don't mind? Uh, Paul and Stephen, maybe? Okay. And when she would communicate with those individuals, how would she communicate with them? Usually it was on um, Discord, uh, which is like Skype, but for more for gamers. Um, or Steam. Okay. Um, I I want to say both of them might have been Discord. I know Paul definitely. Um, I think if it's Steam, that it it would have been on Discord too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's that's all I know. I never. Actually, got to read any of their conversations or anything. She just told me what their names were. Oh, sure. Have you ever gotten to meet either? I met Paul. Um, uh, I can't remember his last name. I think it starts with a K. Um, he was he was nice, um, but he was more of a um, last resort type of place because uh, his apartment was small and uh, it would be difficult to house two more people in it so his was more of a temporary until we found something better. Steve's was more permanent I think because it was a, a proper house. Which one would be in Nevada? Steve. Steve. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You're not sure where Paul but I think, sure. would, I think he's still in New Haven. Okay. Um, were these friends that um, she had before meeting you, or yes. okay, um, she did maybe from like, school or just either in general? either school or through the uh, gaming uh -huh. stuff that she did. Um, but I I don't want Paul to get involved if that's possible. Um, I mean, you're welcome to I guess look for his conversations, but um, I don't. I don't think it would be, I don't think he would, I don't know, I don't even know if he knows that my sure. earth died. Sure. Um, because they were part of the gaming community that, mm -hmm. and she liked to keep her circle of friends separate. Um, so I don't, I don't think her mother knew anyone enough in that game circle to let them know that she had passed. Sure. Um, so I, I don't. I don't want him to have to get involved because I feel like that's going to start a whole cascade. Oh. 
Do you know, and speaking of the gaming community, knowing that um, Ryan was also part of the gaming community, did those there was a connect? different gaming community. Um, Ryan was more of the um, like Nintendo, PlayStation, Steam, online type of community. Um, the Bimani community specifically does Bimani games, which are Japanese. Um, and uh, they are, at least from what she's told me, the members there are kind of elitist. They don't like when new people come in because they've been around for years and years. Um, so they they kind of just stay in their own social circles and aren't really welcoming to strangers. Um, she never got me involved with them if it was possible. Um, I think I... I went to a couple of uh, like house parties, mm-hmm. um, but I usually kept to myself because I didn't know anyone. Uh, I didn't really play the games, or if I did, I was nowhere near the skill yeah. level they were. So um, I only knew basically just one person, no, um, two two people from them that uh, I casually played games with along with her um, and got to meet them. Um, never any close relationships, but I knew who they were. Um, so you obviously had a job at Barnes & Noble and mm-hmm. have had different jobs throughout you know, your life. Mm-hmm. Um, did she get any other um, educational background after high school? She, she started in college, but I think she dropped out. Um, she had tried to get um, a few job positions before she met me. Um, I think she worked at a gas station before she transitioned. Um, when she, I think maybe when she started transitioning, um, she worked at a Jamaican restaurant and there was an apartment that she lived in above it or something like that. Um, when she went to Nevada, she did the, the webcam videos. Um, and I don't, and the only other like, official job position she had was you know, when we first met, or when we first moved to Pennsylvania, she worked at an arcade, um, but she quit after not quite a year, I'm not sure, um, because uh, she didn't get to do what she wanted to do. She liked fixing cats. So she liked getting into the electronics and mm-hmm. soldering and doing all that stuff. But all she did at the job was essentially babysit people. Sure. Um, and I remember her bosses were not receptive to her uh, to her ideas of how to make things better. Mm-hmm. Um, and she got so stressed by it that she was making herself physically ill. So I told her to yeah. quit. Um, and from that point on, the only kind of jobs, sort of, that she did was um, buying old uh, platforms, Game Boys, games, mm-hmm. uh, PlayStations, all the stuff like that, um, fixing them up and modding them for uh, current use, and then reselling them for profits. Sure. So anything she did was primarily at home. Where, where do you know where she attended and kept out from? Uh, no, no. Um, it might have been some kind of IT school, but I, I have no idea what it was or where it was. Well, see, okay. um, getting any other income through um, services, through like the, the county you have been living in, things like that? Uh, we got, we would regularly get food stamps, um, no cash, anything but food stamps. Um, and then, I don't remember. Um, we were still in Pennsylvania. Um, she applied for social security. No, um, it was SSI. I forget what it stands for. Um, so we, I helped her um, find a lawyer for that uh, to do her case, and she got approved. So she was getting roughly seven fifty ish. Um, I think it was it would it would fluctuate depending on my wages, but generally it was around seven hundred to seven fifty a month. For that. Did she have her own bank account then? No. Um, okay. She used either a joint one with her mother, uh, or 
her funds would come straight to me because I was her, I forget the term, the, the responsible party or, uh, uh-huh. basically the party. So, yeah, but your, your, your spousal. Um, it wasn't specifically spousal, but it was because I was her spouse, um, representative payee or something, that's okay. what it's called. Yeah. Um, so I had a, I had a debit card. Okay. Um, so I managed her finances. Um, usually her funds would go towards, um, I had, I paid the electric bill when I stayed with my mom, so I would use hers to pay for that, um, to pay other bills, and uh, just set some money aside for a down payment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the money that I made would usually be used towards her getting her mm-hmm. electronics and fixing stuff up, shipping and shit. Okay. Did she ever at any point have a car or anything like that? I think she did well before I met her. Um, I know that she had her license, um, but she couldn't really drive because she couldn't focus okay. on anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried to let her practice driving my car once and that was terrifying. So I was always her chauffeur. Right. Okay. You mentioned um, her mom. What mm-hmm. would be her mom's name? Uh, Doreen Esmarto. Okay. I could spell it. Could spell it. Could you spell it for me? Uh, so it's uh, Doreen is D-O-R-E-E-N and uh, D-E-S M A R T E A U. What is that? Yeah. Um, I, so I, I don't know how much she knows. Yeah. Um, I know that. I'm not looking at. Oh, okay. okay. Because yeah. I think she's going she's in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine um, what she's thinking mm-hmm. on the news. Um, because right now, what's on the news is the, the statement I originally made. Sure. Um, I have written to her uh, to see how she's doing, and she was able to arrange the funeral, but she is not handling this well at all. Hoping that she maybe responded to your writings to her? She sent me a letter once, um, and I haven't been able to write her back because it hurts too much. Um, But I know that she's been texting my mom, um, and my brother has been helping gather up some of Jen's belongings and mailed them back to her, like her clothes, some of her toys, um, little mementos, the gaming things. Sure. Um, but I, I don't think she's at a point where she can find closure mm-hmm. yet. And do time. Yeah. One day at a time. Yeah. You know, um, at the beginning, you kind of mentioned uh, a statement for sentencing, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Um, you know, obviously, you probably have a lot that you'd like to say, I would assume, mm-hmm. um, given our first interview and then today's discussion and that sort of thing. Um, is that something that you would be open to, to sharing uh, at some point? Or do you think yeah, that um, most of it, I'm trying to keep is it. Is a lot of it the details that we spoke of today? Mm-hmm. It start, I started from when I met Naira on Craigslist and then um, all the way to... Um, Corey and my divorce, her okay. marriage, a couple of other things, and then uh, her she's Yeah. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been asking you a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. I guess is there anything that you want to? Uh, I guess it's, go in more detail. Anything that you saw um, that we've sat here for quite some time. I don't think so. I'm just. Um, I'm just hoping that nothing is going to change the plea bargain that I've done. Um, I am. You mean that, anything that you said today? Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's been discussed with you and your attorneys, and sort of thing. They would never put you in a position to, to do this conversation today. Yeah, um, I just said to tell you the same thing that I told them, but they did. Yeah, um, I think I just went into much more detail about. Naira, mm-hmm. um, and, and we appreciate that because it kind of gives us a little better understanding of kind of what brought things to the point that it did. I, I, uh, I don't, I don't know if the prosecution knows how much detail 
um, about Naira. Um, so I'm basically just hoping that at the sentencing, um, essentially the same thing that I told both of you, just condensed a little bit, mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to go on the record so that my side of the story and what actually happened will be out. Um, because the last time I was in the papers, it was so many things on there I wanted to say. That's not true. That's not what happened. So this is the only time that I'll be able to. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I did think of a couple of other things. Uh, early on, um, when I was first, what what comes after the arraignment? The just mean the indictment or something like that. Okay. Oh, um, uh, the papers had pointed out the large sum of cash okay. and my plane tickets, and assumed I was going to use that to flee. Um, and I never, I never got to correct that about that. Um, the money was about seventeen thousand some dollars. Um, that was supposed to be for a house down payment. Um, every month I would take a little bit from Naira's uh, social security to put it in cash one because um well mostly I did it in cash so I would be tempted to spend it. Sure. Um so I put it in a, a lockbox. Um hoping that uh I would be able to save enough to get a decent down payment. And then with the tickets, um, I uh, they had pointed out the two that I had pending and all of the places I had been to. Um, I love to travel. My my parents love to travel. I've been to so many places with especially my mother. Um, and that's why I had been flying all over the country and internationally before with her. Um, and the two tickets that I had pending uh, one was to go to Nevada, and that was to look at plots of land, um, houses on the market, to get an idea of what we could get. And then the one in September was a gallery show opening that I had gotten a piece in, and I was going to fly out there to see it. So that's what those things were. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess I just wanted it to be known that yeah, it, it wasn't sure. a, it wasn't a, I wasn't ever a flight risk. Um, I had those because that's that was the life that I like to live. Sure. Well, I appreciate you clarifying. If I have to fly Nevada, um, that's where Naira stayed for I think six months, um, and she loves the desert climate. Um, she had lived in Paradise, um, which is close to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and she loved being there. Uh, she always talked about how much she wanted to go back to the desert, and uh, that land out there was much cheaper than anywhere else. Um, I didn't really have a place that I wanted to stay permanently, so um, I was fine with going along with her wanting to live out there. And speaking of traveling, um, when you all went to Thailand, mm -hmm. where did the, the pot and the bags and things remain? Um, so I was still staying at my mom's house. Um, it would have been in the garage, buried under things, similar to um, when I signed the uh, the warrant. Mm -hmm. um, for the police to take it away, um, kind of in the same spot. Uh, okay. At the time, my mom's garage was very, very, very full, so it was easy to lose something in there. Sure. Um, so we just stuck it in the back. In so you're running at the mom. Yes. Okay. Um, and we went to Thailand for her surgery. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I mean, no, you're fine. Um, was Naira born in Holyoke? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's very fun. And then one other thing that popped up is why Illinois? Because we're going to drive to Illinois. I, know, I, I, no, um, I can only assume it was far enough away to manage and close enough that we could get back in a time period that was reasonable. Um, she never told me. She just said, drive there and we'll figure it out from there. Do you recall, I guess, I'm branching off of that a little bit. 
but to Illinois, um, and you came up to Mercer County instead. Was that out of? That was out of habit. Yeah. Um, because uh, I, there was a lot of things that we had to finish taking care of in Columbus before I could turn in the keys and vacate the apartment. Um, so it wasn't uncommon. Uh, I think it was because we didn't want to rent a trailer to carry everything. Um, I uh, would make the drive um, usually once a week or once every two weeks, and we would uh, sift through items that we wanted to throw away or donate. Um, and anything we wanted to keep, we would load up as much as we could in my car and drive back. So after doing that for several months, it just became a habit to follow that path. Um, and since I couldn't have my phone on, uh, I couldn't use a GPS, so I had to get a way that I was familiar with. Um, and I wouldn't have, I don't know if what, what Niger's plan was once I left familiar territory, if she would mm -hmm. let me turn it on or if she would use her own or whatever. Have you been aware that that pull off was there just from driving by? I didn't really know anything about it. It was just the only wooded area I could think of, and I was so tired that I told her, I was like, I can't, I can't keep going. Um, we're going to have to find somewhere to stop. Did you stop to get gas or drinks or food or? I don't think so. Um, I, I know I wouldn't have, maybe I would have stopped for coffee at a gas station, but if we stopped anywhere, it wasn't for long. And I don't recall needing gas. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you want to make sure we cover? Um, I know this is a lot. I know. I think, like, I think you both now have the most thorough story yeah. out of all of it. Um, I did tell a lot of this to uh, Randy and Eric, but not as much detail. Um, well, I appreciate you sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just hoping that it doesn't. They were left back. They were not position. Okay. No, they were not. Okay. Um, I don't. It's more for our educational purposes. That's what I. I mean. figured. Um, and then they're aware of today's date and time and our meeting and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And obviously, I'll let you know um, when we completed that. We got this piece by something, and so we're, we've been communicating. Um, with them through this whole process. Okay. Um, have you been in contact with Ryan's family? Uh, you mean since this is all kind of transpired here? And kind of, or... Um, yeah, I mean, we've been in contact with them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, I haven't been uh, recently, myself, personally, um, but yeah, they, they're they fully, obviously, aware of the situation and that sort of thing. Because I know that, um, unsurprisingly, they were clamoring for the, the death sentence. Um, I'm, I guess one, I'm wondering if this will get shared with them to clarify some things that they're probably wondering about. Um, and I'm also uh, nervous because I know that they'll be there in person at the sentencing. And I, as I've said, I don't deal with conflict very well. So I have uh, a deep seated fear that they're going to scream at me. It, it, no, let me that know. won't be allowed. Okay. Okay. That that's not going to be something that's going to be um, allowed in the courtroom. Okay. Okay. It, it's very much a professional um, proceeding, okay. um, and it's meant to be uh, kept that way. Okay. Okay. Now, obviously, we can't sit there and 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 uh, be sure that it's not really something initiated. But I don't know that I foresee that being an issue. Um, but if it would become one, one yeah. yeah. Okay. But if it would become one, it would be addressed immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm most terrified of is just the fact that I, I have to face them. Um, and I I liked the portion that I wrote specifically addressing them, um, which uh, once I'm done with the statement and uh, if I get Randy's okay, I can make a copy for you or something. Sure. Um, I did say that uh, I know that the words that I say won't bring Ryan back. And I said that I didn't expect them to forgive me for what I did, um, but that I hoped they would be able to find some sort of peace someday. 
very um, nice, honorable for you to, to at least speak to them or at least try to. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully it can bring a little bit of closure, not only for, for them, but also for, for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know that I have anything further. Well, obviously I have to make a phone call um, to, to let the staff next door know. Um, and then, then we'll probably walk back over. If that's okay. It's about 11.55. What time do you want to eat? Well, yeah. Yeah. Right, well, we'll make sure we're not going to sit there. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll get you. We'll get you lunch. Oh, thank thank you. you. We're not going to let you starve after helping us out. Yeah. So. Thank you again so much for the coffee. You don't know how much that means. <laughs> Hopefully it tasted okay. Thanks and we'll bring you down the day that one. They so. have uh, instant decaf in the uh, commissary, and it's off uh, of her. What's your favorite? Um, Since you do drink coffee, so. um, there's a, a local place in Pennsylvania called La Colum, mm -hmm. um, and I think the Wawa's around there have their, their iced coffees, but I usually like um, iced mochas. The most yeah. chocolate. So we're trying to go in there. I don't want to go in Sarah Buzzard was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Ryan Zimmerman. Thanks for watching.